Good morning, everybody. I hope y'all had a fine evening and even better turkey day. Um, ours is pretty nice. I sat around here with the family and we enjoyed ourselves. Ate lots of turkey. Man, it was good. It was really good. Um, this morning, I think we're going to get back at it. Um, we're going to go to Knox County, Tennessee. And uh, there's always something going on in Knox County. I had a friend of mine who lived uh, just south of Knoxville and Maryville, and uh, man, he was he was a good, great friend. He's he's passed away, but uh, he's probably my best friend. Um, man, he was a mess. Uh, and after seeing these court cases, uh, <laughs> I understand why it's the way it is up there. Um, Y'all might have noticed my shirt. I'm hoping it's not too hip for the room. Um, those of you that cannot identify it, you can uh, search it up, as my son says, and uh, see if you can find it. Uh, on another note, um, my uh, wife's father actually went to this high school, so uh, makes it even cooler. Uh, comment if you realize what this shirt is and where it came from. Well, uh, let's get at it. Hello. I'm here. Just setting up a broadcast. Um. All right. What's your name? Babisa Brown. Do this. Okay, Miss Brown, you've been charged with aggravated criminal trespass. That'd be a Class A misdemeanor if convicted. Because they're saying it happened in a habitation, a school, or a hospital. You understand what you're charged with? Uh, no. My understanding that I just got charged with trespassing, that was it. It's trespassing. It's just they're saying aggravated, so there's certain things that make it aggravated. No, I wasn't in a hospital. I got took from my home. Okay, so it could be a house, a habitation, a home yes. a habitation. That was one of those. Yes, it's a home. Yes, it's a house. So habitation, school, or hospital. Habitation is a house. House is a habitation. So I don't want to discuss your case, though. Mm hmm Because you're presumed to Well, innocent. I was just wondering. Okay. And would you like me to read the allegations? Um, you can. Okay. It says, this incident occurred on or about Friday, October 7th, 2022 at 928 p.m. at 3128 Kingston Pike. On that date, time, and location, I, Officer Cogswell, responded to a residential alarm. The complainant and victim, Ann Murphy, advised dispatch that a black female had previously been at her neighbor's house a few days prior and had attempted to break into the house. Upon arrival, I observed the defendant, later identified as Kavisha Brown, who matched the description given by dispatch, leaving the driveway of the residence and began walking eastbound on Kingston Pike. I made contact with Brown and transported her back to the residence. Officers cleared the residence and observed a door in the residence had been broken, and officers were unable to secure the door. After being advised of her constitutional rights under Miranda and deciding to waive those rights, Brown decided to make a statement and answer officers' questions. Brown admitted to having entered the residence through the back door of the residence and leaving through the front door matching the alarms triggered. Brown was arrested without incidents for residential burglary and inventory of the residence is pending due to Murphy being out of town. Brown, so I'm confused. Brown's, Am I being charged with Brown, trespassing or burglary? Because my understanding is that they said okay. I was being charged with trespassing. Hold that thought. Let me finish reading. Brown stated numerous times that as soon as she is released from jail, she would immediately return to her residence at that location. A records check of Brown revealed her to have previous trespassing history. Will you answer that and let them know that I'm on with the women? And I will send them an invite when I'm done. 
A records check of Brown revealed her to have previous trespassing yeah, here history at a nearby address on September 28, 2022. This occurred in Knoxville, Knox County, Tennessee. So, you are currently tra charged with trespass. So, burglary okay. would be entering the building and with the intent or committing a felony theft or assault. So, if they're saying that something was stolen, they can amend that to burglary later on. Please don't discuss your case. You have rights. You're presumed innocent. I'm just telling you the legal posturing of that. Uh -huh. Alrighty. If you cannot afford an attorney, I can appoint one for you. Would you like me to do that? Well, I was wondering um, if my wish could be granted. I got to go to court um, Monday. So I was hoping that everything can be held, this, this trespassing charge, and then what I'm going to court for Monday can be held. And so, I was hoping to be granted um, uh, ROR. So there's certain things we have to do, and I kind of have an order to make it the easiest and quickest possible. So my question was, would you like me to appoint an attorney if you cannot afford one? I can put one in there. Well, can it, can I just have the same one okay. that's going to be First showing up for me can we, Monday? Can we just answer my question? Which was, if you cannot afford an attorney, I can appoint one. Would you like me to appoint one? I mean, you can, but I want the same one. It's, it only makes sense to go to court only once. We're for not it. there yet. We'll get there. Mm -hmm. So this is a legal procedure. It has a sort of order to it. We will get to those things. Those are addressed in this, but we're not there yet. All righty. Mm -hmm. I need to ask you some questions on oath. Make sure you qualify and to set your bonds. Will you raise your right hand and be sworn in? This is the Uniform Affidavit of Indigency that you filled out at the jail. Do you swear or affirm that everything you filled out on this form, any testimony you give is true and accurate? Yes. Thank you. You can put your hand down. You have a job? Uh, no, not currently. When was the last time you worked? Um, I'm actually, um, I work, but I don't work. Like, I do community work where I'm actually in the Navy where I got diagnosis, uh, diagnosed for psychosis. In property, a house or car that you own? Uh, yes, I have a sense that I'm supposed to be going to court for um, Monday. Okay. I have a lot of sets. A sets. Access. Access. Access? Assets. Like properties, like houses oh, and money. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, and what are those? Um, I have property and I have um money that's um in ba different bank accounts. Like one of them um is like forty two point two or forty two point three million or something like that. And then I have like so it's several of them that I have. Okay. But I'm going for it um, Monday because uh, I just wanted to make sure that it's, it's published in the right places and okay. that um, I have the forms and everything in the papers. Do you live in from, Knoxville? From, uh, yes, sir. How long have you lived here? All my life. You got family here? Yes, I do. Um, I have a mom. Um, I have a mom. She's a nurse. And is there anybody that would vouch for your liability to show up in court? Uh, yes. I always show up in court. And I will be there Monday morning. I'm going to have to set it for Tuesday just to give you a heads up. So you're going to reset it? So instead of for me showing up for the 10th, show up for the 11th? If you already have a court date, I'll look at it. We might be able to consolidate, but... Okay. So I'm going to set the bond on this at $500. As a condition of that bond, should you post it, you're still off the property located at 3128 Kingston Pike, I think is what it said. And I'm going to set, well, let me see the court date. We'll look at it. I'll do the attorney first. So 
So it looks like you were represented by the Public Defender's Office, specifically Joe Ramsey might be assigned to your case. And I will appoint them to represent you in this case as well. I'm going to waive the administrative fee that we normally assess for the appointment of counsel. And they have the number of the Public Defender's Office to jail, try and get a hold of them prior to your court date. And uh -huh. let me check and see if you have another court date. I don't mean to interrupt you, sir, but um, you're setting my bond. Does that mean I have to come up with money, or do I get an ROR? It's not an ROR because there were recent charges and also a failure to appear. So we set a bond, but I didn't set it astronomically high. Yeah, that failure to appear, I was um, in Chattanooga Hospital for my psychosis. When my psych ocus, uh, psych ocus, uh spurts up, they put me in safety because I'm a living. Okay, I'll set it on Monday. I will consolidate the okay. cases. So that's 10-10. Mm -hmm. October 10th. Yeah. And misdemeanor court for a bond review mm -hmm. so that if you're unable to post this bond the judge can consider reducing at that time if you do post it they will give you a different court date to go to when you're being released go to that one instead and that's all I have for you all right so if I don't post my bond then I will have to stay here till Monday correct oh, okay okay cost about $87 right, to get out Wow, um, I didn't see that coming. The lady seemed extremely normal at first, and then uh, slowly but surely, it, you know, little things, you know, came out. I'm hoping they've gotten her some help. It sounds like she's had it in the past, but uh, I wonder if she needs to be out on her own. Um, I don't know. That's a that's a sad one there. All right, thank you. What's your name? Clements. What's your first name? Jamaica. Ms. Clemens, you've been charged with aggravated assault. That'd be a Class C felony if convicted. You understand what you're charged with? Yes. Would you like me to read the allegations? Uh, yes. Okay. It says this incident occurred on or about Friday, October 7th, 2022 at 7.45 oh. p.m. at 1305 Joy Road. The defendant... You don't have to read that. Okay. I thought she was talking about something else. I know what happens. Okay. Well, you have some rights I need to go over. The first is that you have the right to remain silent. No one can force you to make any statements. Any that you make voluntarily can be used against you. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, I can appoint one for you. And you have the right to a preliminary hearing that is a probable cause hearing where the judge will hear the evidence against you and decide whether this case is strong enough to be bound over the grand jury for further prosecution. You understand those rights? Yes. Would you like me to appoint an attorney to represent you? Yes. Okay, I need to ask you some questions on oath to make sure you qualify as well as to set your bond so you raise your right hand and be sworn in. This is the uniform affidavit of indigency that you filled out of the jail. You swear or affirm that everything you filled out on this form and the testimony you give is true and accurate? Yes, sir. Thank you. You have a job? Yes, I just started a new job recently. Where at? Uh, hosting health rehab. How much are you making? Uh, $14 an hour. Any property, a house, or card that you own? No, sir. Any other forms of income or of assets? What do you mean by that? I'm sorry. Like other forms of making money 
or anything of uh, value that you can sell to hire an attorney? Uh, no, sir. And you live in Knoxville? Yes. How long you lived here? Uh, my whole life. You got family here? Yes. And who would that be? Uh, my mom, my dad, basically everybody. And is there anybody that would vouch for a liability to show up in court? Yes. Who would that be? Uh, my mom. Okay, I'm going to set the bond at $5,000. The way that works is if you go, if you call a bondsman, you'll have to post, pay them up to $500 plus a fee, about $37. So a max of $537 to get out. As a condition of that bond, should you post it, you'd be prohibited from committing or threatening to commit the assault against the alleged victim or other family or household member. You'd be prohibited from harassing, thought... annoying, telephoning, contacting, or otherwise communicating with the alleged victim, either directly or indirectly through someone else. And you'd be directed to vacate and to stay away from the home of the alleged victim and to stay away from any other location the alleged victim is likely to be. You'd be prohibited from possessing or using a firearm while on bond, and finally, you'd be prohibited from possessing or consuming alcohol or any other controlled substance without a valid prescription on bond. And the alleged victim is a Devin Bailey. Did you have a question? Uh, yes, I thought I was being charged with uh, aggravated uh, domestic assault. That's it. That's the same thing. Yeah, it's there is a domestic and a simple assault with aggravated assault. They're all aggravated assault. It's just it's a domestic uh, victim. So it kind of changes your bond conditions, mm -hmm. but it's, it's technically charged under the same statute. For simple assault, they, they separate into two different statutes, but I just okay. say aggravated assault because that's, that's the name of the offense, but it is domestic. So it's just in basically the same nature, thing? the way that it's, it's, it's charged. Okay. And I'm going to set this for court on... Tuesday, October 11th, for a bond review. So if you're unable to post that bond, the judge can consider reducing at that time. If you do post it, they will give you a different court date to go to when you're being released. Go to that one instead. And then I'm going to appoint the district public defender to represent you. There is a $50 fee for the appointment of counsel. That needs to be paid in general session court clerk's office on or before October, e October 22nd. But uh -huh. if you're unable to pay by that time, they'll add your court costs to conclusion of the case. And they have the number of the public defender's office in jail. Try and get a hold of them prior to your court date. It should be like a three or four digit code. I think it's like 3333 or something along those lines. And if you get released, they'll give you a card that says community law office on it. That's the number of uh -huh. your attorney. Give them a call. And they'll okay. give you so you'll have court on Tuesday if, if you don't postpone. That's October 11th. And that's all I have for you. Okay. Will I be getting papers and stuff on this information? Uh, I think she, I think I, I'm writing it all down for you. Okay, thank you. Here all right. Let's go ahead and go on back. Seeming like a nice lady. It's funny how things work. Anybody else? Yep. Hey, Hi. Hello. What's your name? That's my Weaver. Okay, Miss Weaver, you've been charged with DUI. You have not been charged with DUI. You were on bond for DUI, or, or no, unsupervised probation. You've been charged with domestic assault. That'd be a Class A misdemeanor convicted. Do you understand what you're charged with? Yes, sir. Please forget the fact that I said DUI. I was getting ahead of myself. <laughs> thinking it's other fine. things. All righty. Would you like me to read the allegations? Uh, yeah, you can go ahead. Okay. It says, this incident occurred on or about Thursday, October 6, 2022 at 10.59 p.m. at 3620 Lyons Way. Officer Bailey responded to a domestic disturbance. The complainant and suspect, Desmond Weaver, called 911, stating her ex-boyfriend, Cody, was at her apartment drunk and refusing to give her her keys. 
She then called approximately 10 minutes later and advised she wanted to cancel the call. Upon officers knocking on the apartment door, the victim, Cody Bates, answered, stating the suspect had left. Officers cleared the apartment and observed no signs of the suspect. The victim stated he had been drinking and had taken the suspect's keys, leading them into a verbal argument. <clears throat> Excuse me. The suspect then bit the victim on the left side of his chest. He dropped the keys and the suspect picked them up and left the apartment. Officer observed the victim to have a red circular mark on his chest, which appeared to be from being bitten. The victim advised he does not know where she went or what she was driving. Desmond Weaver was determined to be the primary aggressor, aggressor and warrants were being, are being placed on file for domestic assault. The victim was given a case information card and advised of an order of protection. A citation was not issued because the defendant is not in custody when the warrant was issued. All right, if you cannot afford an attorney, I can appoint one. Would you like me to do that? Um, I'm going to try to get an attorney. I'm going to try and hire one. Okay, if you're not able to, then you can ask when you get to court. Okay. For an appointed attorney again. All right, I'm going to... I need to ask you some questions on oath to set your bond, so you raise your right hand and be sworn in. You swear or affirm, tell the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. You have a job? Yes, sir. Where do you work? I'm a caregiver um, for elderly patients at Comfort Care. How much do you make? Um, I think it's like twelve fifty an hour. Any property, a house, or car that you own? No. I own a car, actually, a Nissan Altima. What do you think it's worth? Probably, I don't know, $2,000. And do you owe anything on it? No. Any other forms of income or of assets? My youngest son is disabled and he has SSI. That's, I, for our purposes, that's his income. Okay. And what else? Do you live in Knoxville? Yes, sir. How long you lived here? I just moved a week ago. Right, where are you from before that? Union County. Is that where you're from originally? So I lived in Knoxville when I was born until 14 and then moved to Union County, moved back to Knoxville for 10 years at like 20 years old, and then moved back to Union County for two years, and then just recently moved back to Knoxville. Okay. Is, is most of your family here in Union County? Union, yes. Is there anybody that would vouch for reliability to show up in court? Oh, uh, yes, my mother would. Okay. All right, I'm going to set the bond at $500 with the condition of bond. Should you post it that you not commit or threaten to commit the offense with that be assault set forth in the arrest warrant against the alleged victim or other family or household member? Mm -hmm. You'd be prohibited from harassing, annoying, telephoning, contacting, or otherwise commu communicating with the alleged victim either directly or indirectly through someone else, and you'd be directed to vacate and to stay away from the home alleged victim and to stay away from any other location where the alleged victim is likely to be. I think I'm actually just going to release you on pretrial. Same conditions, though. I do have a question. What's that? Um, he's technically homeless, and I'm the one that has been taking him in. He doesn't. He's not at my house because when he, I made him leave, I did not give him a key. So what if he comes to my house? Because he's been trying to stay with me even after all of this. Call the sheriff's office, help him, I guess, get his stuff out without violating him. Um, he's already got all his things. Like, so he literally only had he, a small duffel bag. If he's not bag, there, I mean, you don't have to let him in. Right. Okay. So, I just... But I'm, don't was, talk to him. Right. Just, I, don't know, I don't know how to advise you on that, and I'm really not supposed to, so... I'm just worried how he's, like, because I trust and believe I've missed my son's last cross-country race today over this BS, and I'm just, like, my emotions are through the roof. Um, so I do not want to speak to him. Um, I'm just worried because he was still trying to contact me, when, like, even when I came here. 
but okay, just don't respond, I guess. So, let's see something. It looks like you were already represented by the public defender's office on your other case. I think that you would qualify. Do you want me to just go ahead and put them on here, and then you can hire someone if you need to, if you want Yes, to. that would be great. Okay, I'll yes, just go ahead and appoint you. the public defender's office then. And I'm going to weigh the administrative fee because it's already been assessed in that other case. And they have the number of the public defender's office to jail, which they're going to release you here shortly. Okay. You should. Try and get a hold of them or call them when you get out prior to your court date. Um, let me see what your court date is on the other one. I might be able to set them together or I can set a 30 day date. You're talking about the DUI? Yes. Do you have a court date for it? Should be just no, I'm done with I'm done with that. I just have to finish up the little finalization things. Okay. I'm gonna set a thirty day date on this. And that's gonna be for a hearing, so try if you're gonna get an attorney, get them and get going. Okay. And because they'll need to be ready that day. So that would be eight. 7, 14, 21, 28, 29. So I'm going to set this on November 2nd for a preliminary hearing in misdemeanor court. What kind of, let me fill, I'm going to fill out this form. You swear everything on this form is true and correct? Uh, yes, sir, as far as... Alrighty. Yes, sir. I did not put the car on there because I wasn't thinking about the car at that time. You said a Nissan, Ultima. You said a Nissan Altima, correct? Yes, sir. What year is it? It's a 2013. Did you, did you say 4,000 or two? I can't remember. 2,000. It's got a lot of things wrong with it and multiple damage on it. So the actual condition it's in is only about 2,000. Okay. That's all I have for you. I just wanted to go ahead and Mark that. That's it. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a shame all the domestic things that we get to see that uh, that actually happen. Um, people not knowing how to handle things or to turn into violence instead of just getting away from one another. I'm not saying it's simple. <laughs> And I'm not saying I'm an expert, but uh, it's, it's just a shame. We have one more. What's your name? Hey, Ms. Foringer. That's awesome. Foringer. Okay, Ms. Foringer, you've been charged with public intoxication. That is mm -hmm. a Class C misdemeanor, convicted. You understand what you're charged with? Yes, sir. Would you like me to read the allegations? Yes, sir. Okay, if you cannot afford an attorney, I can appoint one. Would you like me to do that? Yes, sir. Okay, I need to ask you some questions on oath to make sure you qualify, as well as to set your bonds. Will you raise your right hand and be sworn in? Mm -hmm. This is the Uniform Affidavit of Indigency that you filled out at the jail. Do you swear or affirm that everything you filled out on this form and testimony you give is true and accurate? Yes, sir. Thank you. Do you have a job? No, sir. Any property, house, or car that you own? I don't own nothing, no. Any other forms of income or assets? No, sir. You live in Knoxville? Uh, yeah, I just moved back with my mom. She's got cancer, so I was helping her. Move back from where? Um, I moved to um, Pitfield to get clean. I've been uh, gone for two and a half years, so I could get my stuff together. When you say gone, did you live here before? Um, yes, I was raised here, and I, I got on drugs really bad, so. Okay, and do you have family here? Um, yes, I have my parents. And is there anybody that would vouch for your liability to show up in court? My mom. Okay. I'm going to set the bond at $250. Mm -hmm. 
and then I'm going to set this in misdemeanor court on Tuesday for a bond review, so if you're unable to post that bond, the judge can consider reducing at that time. If you do you think they could? Pardon me? Mm -hmm. You think they could ROR me since you already arraigned me? They might. Or they might just resolve it that day. Yeah, if you hadn't been picked up the day before, I could have ROR'd you. Or within the last mm -hmm. 30 days. Yeah. And... So I'm going to set it in court on Tuesday, that's October 11th, for a bond review. So if you're unable to post that bond, the judge can consider reducing at that time. If you do post it, they'll give you a different court date to go to If you're when you're being released. Go to that one instead. And let me see what we can do for an attorney. So does 250, is that for the other PI too? Did you run them together? No, that's just for the one. Uh, and I don't, have any, I don't have any sort of violation or anything for that other one. So it's just this one, as far as I know. And I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. I'm going to waive the administrative fee that's normally assessed for the appointment of counsel. They have the number of the public defender's office of jail. Try and get a hold of them prior to your court date, which again will be on Tuesday. And that's all I have for you. All right. Thank you so much. Wow, she couldn't stay still. Um, <clears throat> not sure why, but it looks exhausting to me. I, uh, that's not good. That's all of them, sir. Okay, will you hang up on me so I can call the men? If I hang up, it'll I stop, start everything all over. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, have a good day. Getting the class on Zoom or whatever program they're using. What's your name? Or what, Dustin? Okay, Mr. Arwood, you have been charged with theft of merchandise valued up to $1,000. That would be a Class A misdemeanor convicted. And you've also been charged with disorderly conduct. That would be a Class C misdemeanor convicted. Do you understand what you're charged with? Yes. Would you like me to read the allegations? Yes, please. <clears throat> it says, this incident occurred on or about Friday, October 7, 2022, at 2.40 p.m. at 5328 Pleasant Ridge Road, Officer Baroki and Officer Garvey responded to a disturbance at the Exxon gas station. I was notified, uh, I being the officer who swore out the warrant, was notified of a homeless male wearing no shirt at the intersection of Pleasant Ridge and Merchant Drive, waving around a stick, causing a disturbance. When I got to the area, I saw Dustin Arwood holding a metal pipe taller than him, and he was waving it around on the sidewalk while yelling and making gestures at traffic. When I was able to turn around in traffic, I saw my partner, Officer Garvey, go inside the store or to follow Arwood. Garvey stood by in the store and saw Arwood dump about $10 worth of slushy on the floor and the trash can and took a small 12-ounce bottle of carbonated drink and walked out of the store without paying for it. I confronted Arwood outside the store with Officer Garvey and took him into custody. I spoke to the owner of the Exxon, Devin Drakumar Patel, who told Officer he was interested in prosecuting and his 12-ounce drink was recovered on scene. Patel also said he has many issues from Arwood and wanted Arwood trespassed from the property. While transporting Arwood to meet with the KPD transport wagon, I explained to Arwood he was not allowed back on the property, and he indicated he understood. This occurred in Oxnard County, Tennessee. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> you can't afford an attorney. I can appoint one. Would you like me to do that? Yeah, I need an attorney. Okay, I ask you some questions on oath to make sure you qualify, as well as to set your bond so we raise your right hand and be sworn in. This is the uniform affidavit of indigency that you filled out of the jail. You swear or affirm that everything you filled out on this form and your testimony you give is true and accurate. 
Yeah. Thank you. You have a job? No. Any property, a house, or car that you own? No. Any other forms of income or of assets? Uh, no. You live in Knoxville? Oh, uh, yes, sir. How long you lived here? Uh, I've been living here for about, you know, uh, all my life. You got, family? you got family here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, I do. Who would that be? Thank you, Billy. Oh. Who are they? Yes. I, I understand was, they uh, might not be able to help you, but I, I'm trying to determine your ties to the Knoxville community. Uh, okay, um, uh, let's see, my grandparents, uh, they're the only ones alive right now. You know, my, my brother died, my sister died, my mother died, and I'm, uh, my cousin died, so my dad's been in prison all his life, so. Uh, my only thing I got left is my memo, my papa, and my niece and my nephew. And, uh, and, uh, you know, two and three, or 15, 16, you know. That's about it. Set the bond on the disorderly conduct at $250. Now I'm going to set the bond on the, the uh, uh, and then I'm going to set the bond on the shoplifting at $250 also. As a condition of that bond, should you post it, you stay off the premises of all Knox County Exxon convenience stores. <laughs> and I'm going to set this in misdemeanor court on Tuesday for a bond review okay. so that if you're unable to post this bond, the judge can consider I'm, reducing it at that time. If you do post I'm not going to build it. I'm not gonna be able to post a bond. I understand. So, so if you do post it, that'll give you a different court date to go to when you're being released. I understand you might not. I'm just letting you know. Mm -hmm. And let me see what I can do for an attorney. Mm -hmm. So it looks like you are represented by the public defender. In another case you have going on, yeah. I will appoint them to represent you in this case as well. I'm going to waive the administrative fee that, they normally assess, that we normally assess for the appointment of counsel because they've already been assessed in another case. They have the number of the public defenders off to jail. Try and get a hold of them prior to your court date, which will be Tuesday. No okay. good. That's all I have for you. Are you waiving the administrative fee? Yes. It's kind of hard. It sounds like most of his family's passed away. It's a shame. Um, Dad been in prison his whole life. You know, you have to wonder how he would have been with a little more encouragement and a little better father figure in his life. All right. Yeah. Can I go ahead and go for myself? Um, call the Yeah. Um, so I've got the other one for it. I got the one for it. I need that turn. Okay. Go for it. But one, the first one, the second one, uh, I think you want to have to pay 10% of both of those. I'm not going to have to go to the What's your name? Edward Taylor. And that's Mr. McCook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Okay, Mr. Tetlow, you've been charged with domestic assault. That'd be a Class A misdemeanor. Interference with emergency calls. That'd be a Class A misdemeanor. And public intoxication. That'd be a Class C misdemeanor if convicted. Do you understand what you're charged with? Yes. Would you like me to read the allegations? No. Okay, if you cannot afford an attorney, I can appoint one. Would you like me to do that? Yeah, I was wondering if I can go ahead and plead. No, I can't do a plea. We don't have... We, we, we're not set up for that at this level. So you have to do that in court with attorneys and a bunch of procedural safeguards. So we can't do that at this current time. But if you'd like an attorney, I can appoint one. Would you like me to do that? Yeah. Okay, I need to ask you some questions on oath. Make sure you qualify and also set your bond so you raise your right hand and be sworn in. This is the uniform affidavit of indigency that you filled out of jail. You swear or affirm that everything you filled out on this form and your testimony you give is true and accurate. I do. Thank you. Do you have a job? No. Any property, house, or car that you own? No. Any other forms of income or of assets? Um, just disability. That's all I get. $740 a month? Yeah. You live in Knoxville? Yes. No one you lived here. I'm alive. You have family here? Um, no, not now. Okay, is there anybody that would vouch for liability to show up in court? No. Okay, I'm going to set the bond. On the domestic, well, let me start. I'm going to ROR the PI. The interference with emergency calls, I'm going to set it at 250. And then the domestic assault, I'm going to set it at 500. As a condition that bond, should you post it, you'd be prohibited from committing or threatening to commit the offense set forth in the arrest warrant against the alleged victim or other family or household member. You'd be prohibited from harassing, annoying, telephoning, contacting, or otherwise communicating with the alleged victim, either directly or indirectly through someone else, and you'd be directed to vacate and to stay away from the home of the alleged victim and to stay away from any other location the alleged victim is likely to be. The alleged victim here is a Valerie Tipton. That's my lot. <laughs> And I'm going to set this in misdemeanor court for a bond review on Tuesday, October 11th, so that if you're unable to post this bond, the judge can consider reducing it at that time. If you do post it, they will give you a different court date to go to when you're being released. Go to that one instead. And as soon as that's printed out, I can get you an attorney, and we'll be done. Okay. Are you waiving as a Minnesota fee? I haven't gotten there yet. Okay, I'm sorry. So it looks like you are currently represented by the Public Defender's Office. And now we'll appoint them to represent you in this case as well. I am going to waive the administrative fee that we normally assess for the appointment of counsel because it's already been assessed in a pending case. They have the number of the Public Defender's Office to jail. Try and get a hold of them prior to your court date, which is going to be on Tuesday if you don't post the bond. And that's all I have okay. for you.
Hey, how you doing, sir? Doing well, I'll be out with you. I got things filling this out. Yes, sir. Alcohol. It's amazing how many cases come up and alcohol is in the, in the mix. <clears throat> it's, as I understand it, the one drug that uh, actually makes people more violent. And uh, that's our legal drug. Something to think about. This next young gentleman there, uh, he's got hair, so he's one up on me. But uh, that certainly is interesting. Uh, looks like he did it on purpose, too. What's your name? Camarius Rice, sir. Okay, Mr. Rice, you've been charged with the manufacture, delivery, sale, or possession with intent to manufacture, deliver, or sell a Schedule Six controlled substance. That'd be a Class E felony if convicted. You've also been charged with drug paraphernalia. That'd be a Class A misdemeanor if convicted. You've been charged with evading arrest. That'd be a Class A misdemeanor if convicted. You've been charged with crossing the road at, at an area where a crosswalk is provided but not in the crosswalk. That'd be a Class C misdemeanor. And you've been charged with a window tent violation. That'd be a Class C misdemeanor as well. You understand what you're charged with? Um, uh, is it, um, um, uh, is that weed, sir? Correct. Well, marijuana is a Schedule 6. Would you like me to read the allegations? Yes, sir. And if it is marijuana, it'd have to be over half an ounce. So, it says, This incident occurred on or about Friday, October 7, 2022, at 12.05 p.m. at Fort Palmas Drive at Bonnieman Drive. On that date, time, and location, Officer Reed initiated a traffic stop on a Hyundai Santa Fe on Fort Promise at Bonnie Drive. The vehicle was observed traveling down Virginia Avenue at a high rate of speed with window tint in violation of Tennessee Code Annotated 559107 that you couldn't see through, which applicant later confirmed was darkable, darker than permissible using department-issued window tint test cards. Once I activated my blue lights, the driver, identified as Camarius Rice, immediately stepped out of the vehicle. I gave the driver commands to get back inside the vehicle. The driver then grabbed something from in the door panel of the vehicle and began running on foot. The driver ran across Oldham Avenue and did not cross and did not use the crosswalk while running from officers. The driver was taken to custody after a brief foot pursuit. Officers searched the vehicle incident to arrest. Several bags of a green leafy substance believed to be marijuana was located in the driver door in the passenger seat with a total weight of 75.46 grams. A black digital scale with residue was in the passenger seat along with several small bags containing marijuana residue. The driver did not have insurance on the vehicle. The vehicle was towed to impound by Cedar Bluff Towing. This occurred in Knox County, Tennessee. Everybody knows you can't put the thick tent on your windows where it's just blacked out. That's, I think everybody knows that. I don't understand how someone would be breaking the law and, and riding around speeding in a, uh, a vehicle that they know the officer's going to love to pull them over for that. Um, it reminds me of something I heard on Live PD. Uh, I think it was Sticks. He said, uh, we don't catch the smart ones. And I think that pretty much sums it up. <laughs> Ooh. All right, you have some rights I need to go over. The first is that you have the right to remain silent. No one can force you to make any statements. Any that you make voluntarily can be used against you. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, I can appoint one. 
and you have the right to a preliminary hearing, that is a probable cause hearing, where the judge will hear the evidence against you and decide whether this case is strong enough to be bound over the grand jury for further prosecution. Do you understand those rights? Yes, sir. Would you like me to appoint an attorney to represent you? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, I need to ask you some questions on oath. Make sure you qualify so you, and set your bonds. So you raise your right hand and be sworn in. This is the uniform affidavit of indigency that you filled out, indigency that you filled out of the jail. You swear or affirm that everything you filled out on this form and testimony you give is true and accurate? Yes, sir. Thank you. Do you have a job? Uh, currently, I just got one, but I haven't started yet, sir. Where at? Cat on, on Rutledge Pike. How much did are they going to pay you? Just got a job. How many times have we heard that? Seventeen dollars, sir. Doing what? Uh, machine operator. Is that something you had to get certified for? To do? Uh, yeah, I went through classes to get it. Okay, and have you worked doing that before? Uh, yeah, I just started. I haven't. I get paid like Thursday or something like that. Is that your first job doing that? Uh, yeah. Where'd you work before that? Uh, I worked at a um, soul food restaurant called Herman Soul Food, and I worked at Gatorade uh, Innovate Manufacturing. And any property, a house, or car that you own? Yeah, I own that car that they towed, but it's not. Um, it's still owned by the car company. How much you pay for it? Ninety-five dollars a week. I mean, what's the purchase price? Um, I think like, um, 1200 What was it? Uh, I think it was like, uh, either, either like 900 down. No, I mean, no, I mean, what year, make and model? Oh, I think it was to a 2011. 2011 what? Uh, Santa Fe. Santa Fe. Santa Fe. How much do you owe on it? Uh, possibly like um, four or five thousand. Any other forms of income or of assets? No, I don't have no source of income right now, sir. Okay, and do you live in Knoxville? Yes, sir. How long you lived here? Uh, six years, I think, sir. Yeah, family here. Uh, just um, a wife. Well, we're not married yet, but I have three kids that I stay down here with. And is there anybody that vouch for your liability for your reliability to show up in court? Uh, no, sir. All right, I'm gonna set the bond on the Schedule Six case at one thousand five hundred, and on the evading arrest at five hundred, and then I'm gonna ROR everything else. So you're gonna have two thousand dollars worth of bonds. So you have paid 10% of it through a bonding company. And how much would that be, sir? 237. Okay, appreciate you, sir. And I'm gonna set this in felony court on Tuesday. So if you're unable to post that bond, the judge can consider reducing at that time. Mm -hmm. If you do post it, they'll give you a different court date to go to when you're being released. Go to that one instead. And okay. Let me see what I can do for an attorney as soon as that prints out. It'll take a few minutes because there's multiple warrants. Okay. Do you mind if I just have this one? How you doing tonight, sir? I'm all right. Stay here. Go Tennessee. That one's over. Yeah, they won too, LSU. Baton Rouge. Moving on up. 
So it looks like you are represented by Bailey Harnett in another case. Mm -hmm. And I will rep <clears throat> excuse me, I'll appoint her to represent you in this one as well. Okay. I'm going to waive the administrative fee that we normally assess because it looks like it's already been assessed in another case. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Harnett's telephone number is 317-4529. Try and get a hold of her prior to court date, which is going to be on Tuesday if you don't post that bond. Okay. That's all I have for you. All right. Thank you, sir. You have a nice night. I'll be right with you. I'm going to finish filling this paperwork out. Yes, sir. This last one? Yes. I thought so. He looks military. What's your name? Zachary Kenzer. Mr. Kenzer, you've been charged with disorderly conduct and resisting a stop, arrest, or search. The disorderly conduct will be a Class C misdemeanor and the resisting will be a Class B. You understand what you're charged with? I do actually understand uh, but you don't the charge. Agree. Only in. Uh, I'm you sorry? Don't, you don't agree? Well, I was told because um, I asked. Would you? Uh, and it was, I was told uh, I was being uh, stopped for jaywalking. Okay. And so it, it was a bit of a process, but maybe you'd be able to share with me a little more information concerning the matter as okay. to how it. I'll tell you what, I'll read you the allegations that the charges are based on. Thank it you. It says, this incident occurred on or about Thursday, October 6, 2022 at 928 at Chapman and Fronda. On that day, time, and location, officers were flagged down by a citizen who stated to officers that a man was stumbling in the middle of Chapman Highway. Officers located Mr. Zachary Kinzer on the road on Chapman Highway. Cars were having to change lanes to keep from hitting Mr. Kinzer. Officer initiated their emergency lights and gave multiple commands to give Mr. Kinzer to get to Mr. Kinzer to stop walking and get out of the street. Mr. Kinzer refused to comply with the officer's commands. Officers attempted to gain control of Mr. Kinzer and he attempted to pull away. Officers had to assist Mr. Kinzer to the ground to gain control to be able to place him in custody. When the transport wagon arrived, Mr. Kinzer started resisting officers from switching out handcuffs. Officers managed to switch out cuffs and while physically escorting Mr. <coughs> Mr. Kinzer to the wagon, he resisted officers from placing him into the wagon. Officers had to physically place him in the wagon to be transported to Knox County Jail. This occurred in Knox, Knox County, Tennessee. All right. And there is, uh, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Is well, there, we can't have uh, a there, hearing right now. We correct, but there will be time for uh, additional evidence, as in uh, yes. via camera, yes. via things of that nature that yes. I can maybe proceed and litigate towards the uh, yes. future events concerning okay. this. Thank you. If I afford an attorney, I can appoint one. Would you like me to do that? That'd be fine for now. Yes, sir. Okay, I need to ask you some questions on oath. Make sure you qualify and set your bond so we raise your right hand and be sworn in. This is the uniform affidavit of indigency that you filled out at jail. You swear or affirm yes, everything you filled out on this form. Any testimony you give is true and accurate? Yes, sir. Thank you. Do you have a job? Yes, sir. Where do you work? Uh, ASM Global. Making how much? 
Uh, it's really just a part-time job. It differentiates when needed. Uh, I do right now uh, with everything going on with my PTSD and stuff. I get uh, income for that and uh, it helps with my medical and things of that nature. But I do still work uh, the company because it's close to my house uh, there downtown. Okay. And so usually at like the convention or sometimes they have them in uh, Sevierville as well. And you make $800 a month approximately, average? Uh, sometimes differentiates. I have better months than others, but for average medium, yes, sir. Any property, a house, or car that you own? Uh, I currently rent. Any other forms of income or of assets? Uh, no, sir. You live in Knoxville? Yes, sir. 217 11th Street, 37916. And how long you lived here? Not necessarily uh, that address, but in Knox County. I'm sorry? Not necessarily that address in Knox County. Oh, uh, back and forth uh, since I was very, very young. Um, but just with my father being blind and other family and, you know, my sister, aunt, uncle, and everybody up here, uh, just for a while, permanent home. Okay. You, got, you have any family here? Uh, yes, I have my uh, biological father. Uh, he's a disabled veteran. He went blind, uh, which I try to help. Uh, my aunt, uh, which is his sister, my aunt Vicky, my uncle Spencer. Uh, I have my sister Tiffany, to name a few. Okay. Is there anybody that would vouch for your liability to show up in court? Uh, Anybody that knows me would vouch for that. I believe uh, showing up in court, if you went further into anything, I, I've never, ever had a problem, uh, ever, okay. have missed court in my life for any reason. And that can be proved by court talking. Okay, I'm going to set the bond on the resisting at 500 and ROR the disorderly. So you just have 500 in bonds. You can bond out paying 10% of that plus a $37 fee. And I'm going to set this for a bond review in misdemeanor court on Tuesday. So if you're unable to post this bond, the judge can consider reducing that at that time and or releasing you. If you do post it, they will give you a different court date to go to when you're being released. Go to that one instead. And Not trying. I'm oh, sorry. I'm listening. It's printing out. we got time. I apologize. Excuse me. Is there any way so I don't further have to burden like per se the wife with more fees coming out of our home for something that I am certain looked at in a closer assessment would be looked at in a little bit of a difference. It's not necessarily just to take a huge burden off for me. It's, you know, for those that I do share resources and my home and I'm not going anywhere but to resolve the matter. and. It would be truly, I'm, you know, grateful if I could just save whatever means necessary monetarily right now in my home. Um, so I don't further burden those closest to me. I'm not trying to make any excuses or anything. I know you have a job to do, but this isn't where I really need to be. As for myself and my loved ones, and it would not just help me, but it also helped them. Because I know before one incident I had, which was dismissed, they wanted the whole $500, so it's not always just as easy as 87 and I was told it would be. Oh, well, that's the law. They cannot do that. They cannot no, I had to give do that. I had to give the whole 500 and they said because it's their means of discretion. That was through a bondsman, and that was just one time, but uh, I would greatly appreciate if you was able to ROR or whatever the term for both. I would be hugely grateful so I don't have to extra burden, especially like my wife, because I'm going to hear it. Okay, so with you having several recent arrests and allegations of resisting there, I really can't do well, this at time. But they can do it on Tuesday if they take a look at it and decide that. I did set it relatively low. Yes, sir. And so... I'm just going to keep that, but I'm going to appoint Michael Graves. It looks like he represented you recently and maybe got some some things dismissed. 
Yeah, yeah those allegations were all dismissed Mr. for both Perry, different allegations. There's a $50 fee for the appointment of counsel. That needs okay. to be paid in General Session Court Clerk's Office on or before October 22nd. But if you are unable to pay by that time, they will add it to your court costs, including the case. Mr. Gray's telephone number is 388-3199. Try and get a hold of okay. him prior to your court date, which will be on Tuesday in Misdemeanor Court if you don't postpone it. And that's all I have for you. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Okay, so what's the administrative fee? Fifty dollars. Fifty. Okay. Thank you. Right. <clears throat> they didn't really talk about how he got where he was, but uh, I. It sounds like alcohol, if I had to guess. Um, it's a shame he didn't come out and say he was a veteran, but uh, with PTSD, the way he acts and everything, I. He seems like one to me. Um, I understand him not wanting to tax his family and everything with the costs, but uh, you can't be going out doing that kind of stuff. Um, I feel for him, but uh, no, nah, you can't. And you, you need to learn a lesson. Um, if you need more help, you need to you need to get more help. Um, so anyway, that's what I got this morning. A little long, but uh, I kind of like the going into the detail and uh, seeing everything, not just the ones where people are screaming and hollering and everything. Um, I hope y'all do too. Uh, I'm probably going to end up going shopping with a wife today, so y'all pray for me. Um, uh, hopefully I'll have some money when I get back. We'll see. I hope y'all have a great day, and um, I have a little soft said thing that I'm gonna try to get posted today. It's I don't know. It's 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 different. I, I keep saying that, but uh, for me it is. So hopefully I'll be able to get that up today. Um, I hope all y'all have a wonderful day, and I'll see y'all soon.